Hello. How's everybody doing? I um, added some new features to the channel. Um, one of them is uh, I fixed the emotes now, so any emotes should do the uh, kappa thing. Um, you know, whatever we put in here should show up there. And then uh, also I uh, added some just words that will make emotes happen and float up the screen because I can. So they're mysterious words sometimes. Uh, this is the sample that was collected from an ice cream bucket, <laughs> which was my plankton toe um, while I was home visiting my mom in Ohio. And uh, so these pond organisms were salvaged by, my mom had a, like a one gallon ice cream bucket. And then she, uh, we tied a rope to it and then put some rocks in the bottom and we threw it <laughs> into the pond and then pulled it back to the shore. And uh, whatever was in it was what was in it. Um, which is kind of nice because uh, initially I didn't think there was much in these. Yeah, bucket of rocks, exactly. Ice cream rocks. And uh, I decided to take a look at it today. So what I did was I, um, for clarity, I let the ice cream bucket of water settle for about five hours. And then I went out with uh, a... Um, a turkey baster and I pipetted a macro pipette and I pipetted up the stuff that was on the bottom of the bucket so it settled out of the water column and it had time to settle and um, this is what we got which is a bunch of euglena this is a euglena right here and this one, uh, so euglena are usually identified by the fact that they are green. They have this shape, which is to say they have like a pointy tail and they usually have an eye spot that's red and some of them are ciliated uh, or f have flagella rather um, on, I think maybe they all have flagella. There you can see it a little more clearly now. That's the eye spot, that red dot. And, um, and it's got a little wiggly bit uh, that it uses to pull itself around. And this is a big one. There's a little one that's up there next to it that doesn't look like it's living anymore. Um, but I collected these samples like a week ago. Hey, Prague, how's it going? Uh, we're looking at some euglena that I pulled out of a pond. This is my, the pond that belongs to my mom's neighbor, Sherry. And, uh, I thought it would be cool to um, to image some of these in the light microscope while they're living, because uh, <laughs> because the uh, the stuff that I have for the SEM uh, for these samples and for the light microscope uh, diatom preps, we've already looked at the diatom preps, and the SEM will be sometime next week. We'll look at it. Uh, this is the aerated pond, the deeper one that I used to swim in when I was a kid. Um, and there's a really cool story. Uh, if you were here for that um, little bit, uh, I was talking about these two ponds last time. Um, this pond looks like uh, looks like this. Uh, and we threw the little ice cream bucket off of this uh, pier right there. It's clear water. Um, I mean, it's a little greenish, but that's normal for any pond. And then uh, we found a, um, a really cool diatom in the diatom slides from here, which is, um, at the time I wasn't sure what it was, a little round guy. Um, 
but uh, I thought maybe it was Spicatacribra, and then I went into the uh, SEM and looked at that sample today, and indeed it was Spicatacribra. I mean, I did a little stream into my Discord from that earlier, um, but there was just uh, a couple of people in there, and um, I was pretty excited to find that because it's a pretty rare diatom, and in fact, um, I sent some pictures of it off to my um, taxonomy uh, colleague, Mark, and he goes, oh, can you send me one of these slides when you get a chance? Because I don't think he has any for his collection. And I don't know that the um, the diatom, the diatom uh, class in, uh, in Iowa Lakeside has any of these in their collection either. So um, they might want them. So I'll probably just send him a couple of slides and some prepped material so he can have uh, this really rare diatom. Um, the thing that's funny about it to me is that, um, as I mentioned it, uh, in one of the previous streams, if you uh, choke on diatoms, if you choke on water that has diatoms, the diatoms end up in your, uh, in your bones eventually. And that means that that weird little diatom that uh, is pretty uncommon is probably in my bones because I learned to swim in that pond. Um, and it's pretty likely that it's been there the whole time. And it's the only plankton in that entire system. So, um, so that's pretty cool. These other little guys, I'm not totally sure what all of them are. Um, the round ones are probably some sort of flagellated um, nano haptophyte thingy. Um, they're really kind of large, but um, much smaller than the euglena. And then you can see some of the smaller ones kind of floating around. Um, I actually saw also a... Uh, so the diversity of things in the plankton are basically just this euglena. These little round things here that are shuttling themselves around. And there's a red one right there. Um, that's probably something different. And then uh, there's some uh, really small stuff here as well that's kind of crawling around. Um, calcium rich. Um, I don't know if they if the ponds are calcium rich. Um, in this particular pond, maybe it's the limestone bedrock. I'm really not familiar with what the geology is like there. Um, but, um, so these ones are sort of like flattened disks that are spinning through the water. And I'm not sure what those are either. So these ones down here are a little bit more like globe-shaped, um, or teardrop, gum, gumdrop-shaped. And then there's this one that's kind of like a flattened penny or whatever. And then, uh, those are the two main types of things that I've seen here in the plankton besides the euglena. And I think I saw a rotifer uh, swimming around in this. And um, I had another sample that I had collected from. Well, I collected four samples from the, these ponds. And uh, this one didn't have anything with respect to like diatoms in it um, out in the deeper water, which is um, actually what I would expect after looking at the, um, the really rare diatom that I saw, the Spicatacribra, because um, it was the only diatom, but it was also a little degraded. And then um, there's some other little uh, green algae in here. This is a, um, a desmid. I'm not sure what that, this one of those little haptophytes swimming by. Um, that's a desmid, and I think it's actually flagellated as well. So um, that might be what you see sort of kicking around in it. And I saw a pediastrum in here as well that was moving uh, with its cilia, and then that's a type of rotifer, but that's just the cyst of the rotifer, or the molt, or whatever, the, the rotifer's gone from there, it's either dead, or, or it's just the skeleton, so, um, that's what we see when we just see the, when we find the skeletons for the rotifers, that's a, um, a predator type, <laughs> yeah, rest in peace, rotifer, <laughs> um, it could just be a molt, too. Um, it's possible, but I think it's probably just a dead rotifer that was in, might have been in the sample when we started. I don't know. Um, like I said, it's been about a week. 
everything else in here seems to be doing okay and the other rotifer that I saw that was climbing around in here or clawing around in here also seemed to be doing okay so there's a pediastrum I don't know if that one's actually alive or not but um, oh yep it is you can see its little flagella moving right at the ends of those little horn shaped structures I saw the flagella yeah or I guess it could be something inside of it uh, but usually the um, pediastrum are colonies of these um, so each one of these two horned things is basically a cell um, and there's usually a whole bunch of them that live in a colony together and they've got the flagella on the ends of their uh, on the ends of their little uh, horns Plankton Adventures. Oh, hey, Laura. What's uh, what's the ideal foot length? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you two are funny. Uh, are you making jokes? Addie and Laura. What's the ideal big toe shape? Round? And uh, I don't know. What's a good foot length? What are you two kids up to anyway? Um, oh, 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 I see. Uh, calcium, no, no, no. They end up in our bones by getting into our bloodstream and then uh, being deposited in our bone. <laughs> um, there's another rotor for carcass. Uh, and there is a, um, another desmid skeleton right there. That's, uh, Starastrum, I believe. Please do not ignore your requests. Um, is this some sort of a Mad Libs? Are you guys out, um, at a bar? That's what I want to know. Are you at a bar together? And then you're hanging out watching my stream at a bar. Are you all still in the lab? Because it's late and you should be home, taking it easy. Don't you think? Anything in your bloodstream that's basically a foreign object ends up getting deposited in your bones, Preg. So it goes through your blood and then uh, ultimately gets deposited in your bone marrow. So you might be together. <laughs> might you also be at a bar? Stream to the big bar screen. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm sure that they would love to see a bunch of little wiggly things. A little tiny Euglena. Can I zoom in to what? This? I'm already zoomed in. You think I can get closer? Like... Like this? Is that what you wanted, Pack? The snake euglena, is that what it's called? The long skinny one? Uh, there's another one over here. There's actually a whole bunch of euglena. There's this little guy that's kind of like tadpole shaped. There's this long skinny one. There's this one that's kind of banana shaped. I think it's actually just curled a little bit. You're looking it up, okay. It's like a string bean, yeah. And then there's these guys that are a little bit more bullet shaped. Bunch of cool stuff uh, in the in the plankton toe anyway. Is a plankton toe the ideal size toe? Was that the answer you were hoping for? Hmm. Not 
not sure what that little guy is. Anyway, uh, since there was only one plankton, I'm assuming that, that the diatom plankton is probably out of season because it, uh, it was uh, a little degraded. Oh, it's an amoeba, I think. It's crawling. Yep, pseudopods everywhere. It's a testate amoeba. It was somehow in the water at the time when I collected the samples. <laughs> it's creeping. Leposynclis. Synclis. Isn't that a cool testate amoeba, though? It's just doing its own thing, cruising along with all of its little pseudopod out. What I should do is put something in here so when people say the word Mallory, it makes an emote. That would be good. Um, it could be this grouchy one, because she's always grouchy. Like, grouchy, when Mallory would show up with her mustache. Let's see. Uh, I got more. So that was the plankton one that we're looking at right now. And then there was a couple of different kinds of benthic uh, samples in here. I'm not sure what's in them, but uh, we can take a look. I kind of know what's in the diatom samples because we looked at that. It's pretty much all the same types of diatoms. But uh, I popped one of these on here before we started and it had a a water mite in it, a blue colored water mite, which was pretty cool. Um, but it looked like it was struggling because it was outside of the cover slip. And I was like, ooh, I should put that back here. So I didn't want to have it have a hard time swimming around outside of the tiny little bit that was outside of the cover slip. Testate amoebas again, and that's, uh, oh, where are we? Star Astrum right there, that little green algae. Something is moving, the table is not, so I'm not sure what that is. Crawling around in here. There's another Pediastrum. Uh, let's see, zoom out, there it is. Some of the Lepindroglis have pyramid-shaped bumps. I don't remember seeing any pyramid-shaped bumps. But, um... Maybe there'll be some more in here. Oh, there's a nice healthy pediastrum right there. Zoom in on that little guy. And you can see. Maybe they were grouchy, yeah. <laughs> Something in the water is moving right next to my sample. It's causing everything else to wiggle around. That's not the pediastrum swimming. They do have little flagella at the ends of the horns, but uh, you get a good sense. They're sort of like little kaleidoscopes, kind of neat. They don't move very much though. Kind of a sedentary floater for the most part. But there's a bunch of them. There's a carcass of an ostracod 
with another ostracod. Mm, it looks like maybe it's still alive or it's being eaten. But my guess is that's actually still alive. Those look like it's its parts that are in there, not something else's parts. Some more ostracod bits and pieces everywhere. Ostracods are benthic organisms for the most part. Something's causing this whole thing to wiggle. Maybe it was this guy? Nope. It's probably like a worm somewhere off of my field of view. It's out there causing everything to wiggle around. There's a testate amoeba skeleton. And an oscillatoria. Oh, there's a little guy that's still living too. Um, Vosmina maybe? See him shuffling around in the water, or right there. Oh, it's a uh, Cadorus. It's got a little tiny trunk. I think it's a Cadorus. You can you can see both of its little swim arms right there, pretty easily. And it's digging around in the um, the sediment with its foot. That's probably what was causing all the disturbance earlier. It's got its little swim arms out. So on the wrong, huh, slightly wrong setting. There you can see its eyes. They have little compound eyes and its back leg is kicking around. Let's zoom out a little bit so we can see it in context. So that's probably what was digging around in the sediment right there causing all of the disruption. I saw some little rotifers in here kicking around as well. They don't move as much stuff though. Oh, there's a little wiggler. Uh, ostracod, I believe. See, it's got its little feet out. Also kicking around in the mud. Yeah, pretty impressive. just to watch them kind of crawl around. Um, largely benthic organisms, so they're used to kind of moving around in the mud like this. So it's right off at the edge of the actual... Uh, the slide won't go any farther. It's trying to sneak out the edge. Out there be dragons. I don't recommend it. A little testate amoeba skeleton. Hey, Radio Joe, how's it going? Good the. There's Radio Joe. Give him his Radio Joe emotes. How is uh, things at home? Having some good family time, hopefully. We're looking at some of the samples I collected when I was in Ohio. This is something here that's crawling very slowly. Look at that. Yay, shout out for Hannah. Is it a worm? I don't think it's a worm. I'm not sure what that is. It doesn't seem like a worm. Let's see if I put it up on 20x, what happens? Oh, 
Nothing is impossible. Not if you can imagine it. I think it's some sort of algae. Yeah, cyanobacteria maybe. It's either algae or cyanobacteria. It just looks like it's moving like a worm, but I think it's actually just kind of oscillating and crawling around. <laughs> what makes it cyano? Uh, well, cyanobacteria, uh, let's see. Well, they're a type of bacteria, so. Gives you the same sense of wonder as the first time you played Spore. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and thanks for following. Oh, you don't know you're saying stuff. Well, you know what? Uh, sometimes I'm just saying stuff, so don't worry about it, uh, Barb. Uh, Barbados. Black Billy. Um, we'll take all kinds of comments. A worm would be a good guess, uh, a good starting guess, because it is very worm-shaped. <laughs> But, um, I'm going to guess it's not. Uh, it doesn't seem like a worm to me. It doesn't have any organs or anything. It's just, uh, chloroplasts and cilia, I think. That is really weird. And kind of mesmerizing. Don't you think? Look at the like squiggly bits inside of it. And it just goes right through. It's like, I'm gonna go dig around in this stuff. Don't mind me. Now that, that there is a gastrotrich. That one I know. It's also digging through the sediment and it's a little over bright in my opinion. Come back. Come back. There you go. That guy's like a little tiny snail looking thing without a shell. Gastrotrix are named after the fact that they have a hairy belly. That's what their name means. Uh, but I think they look like little snails. They're not snails. They're obviously some sort of protozoan. Looks like maybe that one's trying to find some food. Uh, they have two little, two little tail pieces that stick off at the back end. Makes them pretty distinct and easy to identify. <laughs> Organic light bulb filament, kind of. It's kind of what they look like. Um, you see, it's two little tail spines sticking off there. So. Also some little predator, it's, it's working its way through looking for food. Um, I found, there's another uh, ostracod, I think. It's just crashing in. It's decided it wants to be the center of attention. It's just gonna butt right in and then dig around in the sediment for us. See, it's got its little appendages moving. I think it just pooped out something too. There you go, it's a poop stream now. In terms of service, there's some more poop coming out. You can see what's going on there. You can see the food moving through the inside of it. And then, uh, <laughs> poop stream, best stream. <laughs> What I should do is uh, get a command where there's an emote that shows up when somebody says poop. And then I can have a little floating turd that moves by that I take as a picture from the SEM from uh, Pacific Plankton's giant poop stream. She sends me poop all the time and then like a few diatoms between the poop. It's mostly what the samples are is poop. These ones aren't though. That's uh, detritus probably from, well, could be some of its poop, but that little guy there, it's an ostracod. Little jelly bean. 
Or Kaidoras, maybe, actually. Oh yeah, there you go. You don't intentionally send poop. <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's a Kaidoras, not Ostracod, actually. I can see its face now. So the beak or the nose is actually the thing that usually helps you separate the, um, the different types. Kaidoras look like this. They have sort of a short little beak and a rectangular butt. Um, that's a molt or a dead one right there. Um, and then they have like a foot that sticks out the back. And ostracods are basically just a jelly bean with no head separation. The whole body, you know, they're all inside the body. Yeah, now it's a poop stream. You got poop all over the screen. Um, it's pretty cool that they're still in here uh, living and they're still crawling around and I guess there's enough food in these things to keep them busy for a while. There's some diatoms. There's one. Um, it's kind of nice because uh, I just had the sample sitting around for a while. Hey Sam, how's it going? Uh, we got raided by Billy Galaxy Art. Welcome in, raiders. Thank you for the raid, Billy Galaxy. How's your stream? Were you doing some editing, some video crunching, uh, some music? What was going on? Some more diatom pieces right there. Some of these little, uh, that's a cilia called col uh, collaps. That one right there, it eats detritus and uh, it's found some. They're like little tiny barrels. They look like the um, uh, hard candy root beers. I don't know if you have like a grandpa that ate those like hard candy root beers. They have like a barrel shaped um, candy. And these look kind of like those. I bet they don't taste like it though. I bet they don't taste like it at all. I mean, if they were big enough to have a taste, I doubt it was root beer. Um, creating loops from old content for new content. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's, uh, that's efficient. That's using all of the stream. There's a big old tested amoeba skeleton right there. That giant thing, that's a tested amoeba. It's huge. It looks like it's been abandoned. Probably it got that big and then it's split into a bunch of little amoebas or at least one more. What the heck is that? What? When did we get triangle things with flagellas? What the heck? I don't know what that is. I have no idea. Oh wait, it doesn't have a flagella. It's a long skinny bacteria next to something that's triangular. Okay, that makes more sense. I don't know what the triangular thing is. It could be pollen. And then there's a long skinny piece of bacteria that's, I think that's what that is, shuffling around. These little flying eyeballs that are right here. Oh, I forgot because we're so zoomed in. Yeah, we're on 20x, and then, you know, three times that, so we're actually super zoomed in. Hey, it's one of those little wiggly tongue guys. They pull themselves around by their cilia, or their flagella. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Sorry about the brightness. Dorito chip. That's yeah, a good idea. It does seem a little bit like a Dorito chip. Do you know, one of the things that's kind of nice about that is when I was zoomed in um, super close is that you kind of get an idea of the different scale of things that you can see. So there's these like giant testate amoeba skeletons and those, that's an oscillatoria fragment right there. And the diatoms, um, these desmid skeletons. There's all kinds of things, and they're all at very different scales, even in this sort of microscopic world that we're in here. Um, there's a bunch of little tiny things, and then there's even tinier things, and then there's some even tinier things. 
and it just never ends. So here's the ostracot again, clambering around in the muck, looking for some detritus to eat. But that's a, uh, an example of one of the larger organisms in this system. You know, the ostracods and the daphnia and the chidoras and the um, bosmina are kind of like the top, right below fish in terms of things that are in here. We don't have any fish in here, but they're the things that fish would normally eat. And then they might eat some of these like larger algae that are in here, like this Cenodesmus or Pediastrum. And um, so some of these larger things in here might also get eaten that are in the plankton by the fish that are usually visual predators. And then all the little things in here that actually get eaten by the zooplankton it creates a very intricate food web that we just have a little sliver of that we can see because it goes all the way down to the bacteria and um, things that the bacteria um, mostly just decompose things, but they, um, they're part of things that get eaten by the little tiny guys quite frequently. These diatoms that are in here, by the way, oh, I found another ostracod or something up there. Nope, it's a Kydora, Kydoras. Um, these diatoms that you see that are like teardrop shaped right here, that's a Cerarella. And um, I don't know what species it is. That one's dead, but, um, oops. I'm trying to type, I'm typing here, Cerarella, look at that, huh? one of my keywords, magic words. Um, but these, uh, yeah, you don't even need the exclamation point. You can just type the word Cerarella and a Cerarella icon will appear. Um, but this sort of teardrop or egg-shaped thing is um, a Cerarella. And I don't know what species it is. And uh, so I'm still trying to figure that out. Um, now you want Doritos. Well, I have some Doritos. If you live close by, you can stop stop in. Whoa. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello. Did you did the copepod want to <laughs> into this field of view? I guess. Um, there's an example of the bigger, of the probably the biggest things in this sample. Um, the copepod just inserted itself in our screen. It just did a little photo bomb and then left but that is very clearly a copepod and you can see it's like an order of magnitude even bigger than um, some of the other zooplankton in here and its belly is probably full of diatoms and whatever else it can find they're sort of torpedo shaped um, and then have these really long antenna and uh, Good news, everyone. that's how they kind of get around. Um, they have a set of legs underneath that, that are um, not completely visible to us, uh, but that they sort of push themselves or swim around with. So <laughs> it's big pimping. Yeah, it uh, it's going to let me finish my stream, but first it wants to tell me about uh, Beyonce's new album. a big boy um, those are I actually didn't realize that was in the sample <laughs> um, it just inserted itself spooky kitty cat followed at the same time we were hearing a spooky kitty cat in the background it's spooky yeah that's not a spooky kitty cat that's just Wednesday and uh, she probably wants to get on the microscope so um, Anytime I put stuff on the microscope, she suddenly decides, hey, what are you doing? Let me take a look. And then uh, once she realizes it's just diatoms and zooplankton, she doesn't care so much about it anymore. But uh, 
Sometimes the zooplankton can be a real bummer because they will just dig through the mud and put themselves in front of the screen everywhere I go. And then I have to deal with the fact that I can't see anything except for them. There's a, another little collapse right there. As I mentioned, they're sort of detritivore, like, um, silly. Good news, everyone! There's just sort of like mystery piles of detritus that are moving around seemingly on their own in there And I think it's because there's something in there that's swimming around <laughs> Wednesday, yes, yes, Adams, exactly Our cat is named after the spooky, ooky Wednesday Adams uh, from the Adams family And uh, we didn't name her, the, the pound did But uh, we decided to keep the name once she... Once my daughter met her, uh, she decided, oh, okay, we'll just go with Wednesday. That's a good name. Um, wow, that guy really looks creepy. What is that? Um, I guess it's just a piece of something's carcass, but I don't know what. Very spiny. Something big is coming. Something very big is coming. It's moving everything around. <laughs> this is so weird. I'm loving it. Oh, well. Spooky kitty cat. Thanks for hanging out. Um, if you like this, you should stick around because I think following my stream is going to be Pacific Plankton streaming. She's here as my moderator at the moment, and then when I'm done streaming, I'm going to take over as her moderator, and she's also going to have some stuff from um, the plankton at San Francisco Bay. So you've got a whole night of microscope creatures uh, crawling around if you want it. Um, or you could just follow her, and then you could catch it any time you'd like as well. But... Um, When I have something to look at, I like to, you know, be the opening act for Pacific Plankton. She's going to headline with something cool, which is the plankton from San Francisco Bay. So she's got things like little tiny jellyfish and little tiny uh, baby mollusks before they are reached any sort of a adult size. And lots of copepods and cool worms and other creepy little guys. Collapse. Pediastrum. There's a ostracod skeleton that's covered with diatoms and other things. Lots of cool stuff in this sample. And like I said, with the copepod even, I'm really surprised some of these things are still alive after a week just sitting in a little plastic test tube in my lab. Um, half the sample got sacrificed to uh, um, the SEM and the, sl the microscope slides that I made. But... Um, A fair amount of it still has stuff in it that seems to be kicking around, so that's cool. Copepod still here. This guy's just been kind of sitting, not doing much. That's another ostracod. There's some eggs of something right there, too. Not totally sure what those are. I thought maybe in the samples that um, I had from my mom's that there might be some cool stuff underneath the duckweed. So we can still take a look at those. We didn't really spend much time looking at the living stuff from my mom's pond. This one's actually my mom's neighbor's pond. Um, and this one was the clean water one, but we're looking at some of the detritus from the bottom and the sides of the pond. There's that gastrotrich again crawling around. And um, 
So we can hop over to that sample and take a look at it as well and see what it can find in it. it should be kind of interesting. Um, let's see, sorry, I was busy blabbing and I saw maybe uh, Sam had a comment. Today I found out about bacteriophages. That's the orders of magnitude to the microverse. Yeah, so bacteriophage means something that eats bacteria, little things basically. Um, Yeah, give Pacific Plankton a follow. Um, disappearing into the microscopic world with my friends. Yeah, I think she means her friends in the microscope. Can I zoom in any more? Uh, yes, I can zoom in quite a bit more. Um, B Swift, how far in would you like me to zoom? Um, I mean, we can get super zoomed in if you like. Uh, and if you want to come back on a um, Monday afternoon or um, a Wednesday afternoon, I will stream from my scanning electron microscope and then we'll get as zoomed in as anybody possibly could. And I'll be looking at some of these same samples then. Um, but it'll be processed material and the organisms in the samples will all be dead by that point uh, because they're in a vacuum and been coated with gold and all kinds of other crazy things have happened to them. Nothing is impossible, not um, if you can imagine. So it. they may not be quite as uh, wiggly by that point. But um, the microscope that we're looking at has a thousand x objective on it. Well, a hundred x objective, but a ten x magnifier, which makes it about a thousand times. And then my camera has an optical zoom on it as well, a digital zoom um, that will let us zoom in a little farther. Um, so we can actually get quite close if there's something very little that you want to see. Let's see what's in this sample. This was taken from the duckweed at the top of my mom's pond and that pond so for reference, the lake we were just looking at um, looks like this. And um, I collected the plankton sample that we were looking at at the beginning from right here. And the second sample we were looking at, I collected from the sediment that was right here. And um, we've also I also collected some material from these plants right here and another site that was around on the side of the lake uh, over here. Um, that we can't see because there's some bushes, but you can see that this pond is um, It doesn't have any cat tails or anything around the edge anymore, but it used to um, It doesn't have any sort of swamp land. It's basically grassy lawn right up to the edge of um, Of the lake so they keep it really closely carefully um, mowed and then uh, You know a little tiny dock um, It's not a super deep pond, but it's deep enough that uh, I learned to swim in it so, I mean, like when I was first learning how to swim. So, um, the magnification that we were looking at before, this is the 10x objective, and I flipped it over to the 20x objective for a little bit, and then the, um, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what you have. Uh, your high school science class had a 10x and a 100x. That's what these objectives are. There's a 10x on here that we're looking through. Um, right now, and then there's a 100x objective, but the eyepiece is magnified by another 10 and the camera has one of those that magnifies it basically by 0.7 times, so um, 70 times magnification or something like that. I've got the scale bear on, on here, but we're actually not at that scale. We're usually, well, we are right now, so roughly that size. Um, so this is the pond that we were just in, and then we moved to my mom's pond, which is this one, and um, both of these are natural ponds. They have been around for as long as anybody's been around. They're spring-fed, and um, but this one clearly is a stagnant water with a um, all this stuff that you see, the green stuff. It looks like you could walk on it, but it's actually duckweed or lemna 
Um, it's little tiny plants that don't have any roots or they have floating roots, basically. So they just float on the water. And they got their name from the fact that geese and ducks actually eat it. So, um, but there's a lot of types of organisms that can live in the, um, on the surface of the duckweed and then inside of the, underneath it. Um, so we can take a look at those. Did I find any Lemnicola? I didn't see any in the diatoms that we had, but um, to be honest, I didn't spend a lot of time looking for it. Um, I got sidetracked by a bunch of other things. So that's Senedesmus right there. That's a green algae and um, a desmid, Senedesmus. And um, I talked about these before. These live in my koi pond. Uh, not this species, but uh, something similar. And then there's a whole bunch of little bacteria and stuff floating around it. But um, uh, they usually indicate higher nutrients. So um, there were some desmids in the other pond, but there's a lot more in these ones. And there's a lot in my koi pond because my koi, um, you know, the they eat a lot which means that they, well, they're goldfish in there now, but they eat a lot of algae and then it decays and it doesn't have anywhere to go and the pond's relatively small, so it's hard to aerate it very well. Um, so there's a, um, uh, a euglena. We saw some euglena before. This is one of the ones that we saw in the plankton of that other lake. Um, this is the one that was kind of curled up before. It's a little fatter. So we saw one that was like super long and skinny, and then we saw one like this that kind of liked to curl up, and this one's the one that kind of likes to curl up. It's the same one. I don't see any bumps on it. I don't know what you mean by bumps, but um, like say if we wanted to zoom in to... I think we can get the next level of magnification. Yeah. Uh, it's pushed up against the cover slip a little bit because there's some trash in here, but... Um, that's a 20x objective, so the scale bar's wrong, uh, but I can adjust that. This is 20x times 3, which is that one. So that's about, oops, 0.2 millimeters, no, 1.5, something like that, 0.15 I mean. I don't know that I see any bumps on it. Um, coming off the front is some flagella, and then the back has the little tail. That's basically uh, a euglena. That's the way they look. You can see it's little cilia, it's very small, or flagella, it's right here. It's this little piece, it's like an antenna sort of thing coming out of its face, and then there's a tail here that's pretty common for all of the euglena, they have that kind of look to them. Um, the little fast floaty things that are going by are bacteria for the most part. Um, there may be some flagellated uh, nano um, uh, nanophytes or nano haptophytes or whatever the really small ones um, with a flagella so <laughs> they could be UFOs uh, unidentified floating objects maybe um, let's go someplace where we're not on the edge of the cover slip that's all bowed up so we might actually be able to zoom in even farther if we had to um, there's some more ciliates. Wait, it's super bright. Sorry about that. There. There's some more ciliates in here. That's a rotifer right there. I can tell by the way it's moving. It's got a little long pointy tail and a round body. And then this thing that's next to it right here, that's a... Lena, maybe? I don't know. It might just be some sort of a... No, it's some sort of a ciliate. So, not sure. 
And then you can actually see there's a bunch of, there's a little highway of bacteria all around in these samples. Hmm. That's a cool thing. That is an amoeba, I believe. Do you see? It's like a sort of three, three, three long pseudopods sticking out. That's pretty cool. I've never seen anything like that. Yeah? Can I zoom in on it? Absolutely. That one we can zoom in on. Hang on. We'll go zoom out and then I'll switch over to the 20x objective. And hopefully I didn't bump it. It's still there. And let me make some adjustments. There you go. And you can see it's got little pseudopods sticking out and it's agglutinated sort of, oh, hello Rotifer. It's agglutinated a little sort of triangular star-shaped uh, home for itself. And then it's got the pseudopods sticking out from every corner. Isn't that cool? You can see them moving if we just leave it still. You'll see that they actually move around a little bit. They change their form. It's maybe a little dark even. Let's see if I bring up the light a little bit. I'm trying to keep the, uh, the rocks from glowing. The body of it is right here. You can kind of see it's moving the pseudopods around. And there's a little tiny uh, ciliate right there next to it. You can see it's, um, oh, there's two of them dancing around it. Those are probably like, I don't know, Rogastoma or something, those little tiny ciliates. It looks like it's doing a little dance, doesn't it? It's crazy. Uh, and then there's another thing up here that's also moving in a very interesting way. This little tiny thing. I don't know what that is. It's super small. It's got robot arms. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's still on the area of the slide that's kind of, um, tilted because of, there's something in the corner. So let me see if a 40X will fit. Okay. Uh, it will. Oh, it's growing a new pseudopod. Hello. Now it's going to have four. Now it's gonna have five. Just make make as many arms as you like, I guess. Oh, now it's crawling. <laughs> Hello. It looks a little bit like Patrick at the moment. Well, kind of a drunk Patrick, maybe. Oh my goodness, that is cool. Just remake yourself however you like. If you're an amoeba, you're busy living forever because um, they can. And then you can just take whatever shape you like too. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's dabbing. <laughs> it's dabbing with many arms. It's rearranging itself again. And it's making itself into a Klingon spaceship or something here. Uh, that's a single-celled organism. The little bubbly things that are inside of it are, uh, I don't know, you know, pieces of its skeleton maybe, or uh, food, I'm not sure. But they're single cells, so. Now look at it. It started off as a triangle. 
Yeah, I think today I'll have four arms. But I think actually it's got like 20 arms now. Look at it. Whatever you are, a little round thing right here. You might want a GTFO because it looks like it's coming for you. <laughs> Shimmering magic goo. Exactly. <laughs> it looks like it's working its way over to that. If it gets eaten, that will be pretty impressive, but... It does look pretty magical. I'm on board with the magic part. Let's see if I can make it look pretty. That's a little too much. Uh, there. Now we can kind of see the legs a little bit better. And I could probably bring this light up a little bit. There. It, uh, it looks like whatever that was got consumed. It's now part of the amoeba. <laughs> Oops. You shouldn't have parked yourself right there, whatever you were. You're inside now. You joined the Borg. Good game. <laughs> yeah, it definitely got assimilated. You can see it's kind of like stuck inside. It doesn't know what's happening to it. You see it moving around in there, right? You can see that? It's in there like, oh crap, I stopped in the wrong place. <laughs> maybe there's a way out of this thing. And maybe, maybe it could break out. It's inside it now though. <laughs> it woke up just a little too late. <laughs> Oops. It's a microbe eat microbe world out there. And, uh, and now we're watching it happen in real time. This thing's amazing. I feel like we could just spend the whole hour watching this crazy thing change shape. Yeah. Are you gonna sing a tool song for us, Pragmatic? Uh, it's pretty crazy. And it's like, well, now I got this food, I'm gonna surround it by brown stuff so it can't escape and slowly close down the brown stuff on it while I spread my body in the opposite direction. That is some crazy stuff right there. It still has like a long leg sticking out the back somewhere here too. <laughs> you need dinner. <laughs> now it's crawling. Oh, it looks like a little aardvark or something. Remember when it started and it was just like a little star shape? I think it's just slowly digests it. I think it just keeps it inside. It's an amoeba. It's absolutely an amoeba. Uh, this is what they do. That's what amoeba do. <laughs> you never thought science streams would be so relaxing? Well, um, you know, a lot of people tell me I should put ASMR on my tags, and uh, I think they tell Pacific Plankton the same thing. So if you want to hear some people be excited in a quiet way about uh, microbes, you came to the right place. Um, Let's see what else it might eat. I don't know. How long could we watch this before we got bored with it? Because I feel like I could just watch it for the whole hour. I could just be like, do you guys mind if we just watch this amoeba for the next hour? <laughs> uh, these things are crazy. And uh, just amazing how they kind of flow from one place to the next. And that thing is still surrounded in there. It's got it surrounded so it can't escape, I think. 
make it sparkle. Oh, okay. I can actually turn on the, uh, let's see, that was this thing. There you go. We turn up the um, DIC contrast. And I think I can add a little bit of light with this to get the relief in. It's sort of like polarizing uh, in a way. It does have a polarizer set into the um, the objective. It's not as strong as a mineral polarizer, but just decided it's going to start going down now when it was going up before. like a campfire you could watch it all night yeah that is exactly how I feel about it it's like this is nice I, we can come back to it though um, that's the other thing is I don't think it's gonna get very far it's towards the bottom of the slide so we can we can actually reverse out if I get rid of the bullet glare you can see it's just this tiny thing down there And uh, I got a general idea where it is, the bottom middle. We can come back to it. See if there's anything else in the sample. That's all the way to the bottom. Oh, there's another one. There's another little amoeba right there, and it's next to that. See it? like a blue glow to it and then it's right next to that little paramecium or whatever it is yeah this is ciliate and there's a rotifer hiding in there a really big rotifer holy moly uh let's see if we can zoom in on that a little bit let's see what i can do I startled it when I changed the objectives. But now we can get a little closer. There's its antenna. And now it's taking out its corona, which is what the rotifer uses to eat with. And they spin these little corona around. Um, uh, to chew up, move stuff towards its face and to chew on it um, is that little thing that's inside of it called a, the mastax, which is this thing. So it's got two little uh, ciliated ends which look like they're spinning. They look like propellers, but they're actually just wiggling back and forth, like just like like this. And so it looks like they're spinning, but. Um, you can see the particles being pulled towards its face right here. There's all those things. That's a little current that's being generated by our vacuum cleaner right here. And that is a really clear, gorgeous view of a rotifer. Here's the antenna. There's little, little hairs on the antenna. And then its mouth is located like in here in between the two propellers. Good news, everyone. Um, I don't know that you'll get a clearer view of a rotifer than that right there. That is a big rotifer and it's not moving very fast. And it's, it looks like it's in a, the goo that it's in is basically uh, where it's nested itself. So you can get a nice clean shot of all the particles coming towards it right there. See the little current it's making? Super cool. Yeah, a little vortex of death, like a buzzsaw. Goes right into its mouth. And these rotifers actually have, I think these little things are eye spots, so they can see sort of light and dark. There's a little tiny uh, ciliate. It's like 
kicking against the rotifer. And you get a really clear look at those cilia right there uh, that it uses to spin on these things. These are called the corona, like a crown is what that means. And there's another one back here. Um, it's just off the top of its head, basically. And you can see all the stuff being pulled towards it from everywhere. And if we zoomed out, I didn't like that. I bumped the uh, the stage when I did it. But you'll see that it's stuff from all the way out here that's being pulled in towards it. So it's creeping back out again. We'll see if it, it'll start spinning. It just, it doesn't like the vibration when I touched the camera. <laughs> that's just you at the buffet. There you go. You can see all the stuff from way out here being pulled towards it. So it generates a really strong current. Hey, Zoikia, how's it going? So you can see right, it's pulling stuff from way out here. It's basically its whole body length away. It's still pulling all that stuff towards its face. And that allows it to just live there. It looks like it's decided to make this some sort of a nest and its foot is attached back here. They have like a two or three toed foot that they use to grasp onto things. And it looks like it's just made a little home in this pile of goop. And uh, it's just in here spinning its propeller and chomping on stuff. And um, you might have already forgotten about the fact that there's a amoeba in here somewhere in this pile. Back here somewhere. I don't know where it went. Somewhere back in here in this pile of goop is an amoeba that was eating on stuff too. Um, oh, thank you for the cheer. And we can get a really clean look at it. Right there. Yeah, I don't know that you'll get a better look at a rotifer. Then that's a pretty awesome Nothing clear view. Nothing is impossible. Not if you and can thank imagine. Thank you for the follows. Be swift and um, mango. Pretty cool. Yeah, if it had a little tiny pizza, um, larger particles sometimes will get rejected. Like, see that thing that's sort of spinning around up there? A lot of times the rotifers can't control what's coming towards their face. And I've seen, like, larger particles just kind of hit them in the face repeatedly. Good news, it sort of spins everyone. around in the gyre. Um, that's pretty normal. So. But you can really get a nice clean look at the cilia on this. And we're not all the way zoomed in. We're, this is only 200x and then times three. So that scale bar is wrong. It should be, oh no, that scale bar is right actually. So you get a sense of exactly how big that is. It's maybe a third of a millimeter in length, the whole thing. Here's the rest of its body. This is the, this is the food track right here. You can see it's attached to this mastax organ is the thing that's doing the chomping and then yeah those are the corona at the top that are spinning that are creating the gyre this is an antenna and when it puts its little corona away like that the antenna is the only thing that sticks out and it uses that to kind of sense around or feel around um and its mouth is actually right there it pulled its mouth back in and pulled the um the corona, there's its mouth, right in here somewhere. And then the corona are out spinning, and that's its antenna right there. So when it, it'll pull these corona back in, and then it just has the antenna and its mouth sticking out. Superb. You love Daphnia. Um, we had uh, Kaidoris earlier, Mango, and um, uh, Ostracods, and I think we saw a Boss Minus skeleton, but I didn't see any Daphnia um, in the other sample, and I would probably not expect it in this one. Um, and we also saw a Copepod, um, so we got the, most of the larger organisms from lakes. <laughs> Um, in the other sample, 
that I was looking at. Uh, it was from a plankton tow. Um, and then there was one that was taken from shallow water from a deeper pond than this one. This is a pretty shallow pond um, that this stuff was collected from. Um, this one is uh, a pond that's in the forested area by my mom's house. It's this pond. And uh, the outside edge is just mud, so you can't even get into where the water was. But uh, I collected some samples with an ice cream bucket on a rope here, too, um, in both of these ponds. It's a good-looking pond. I don't know about that. Um, but it's a spring-fed pond, and uh, it, it's natural. And it's, you know, tucked away in the woods. Um, and uh, it's got some good critters in it. It's got this rotifer. And we saw a really cool amoeba a little bit ago crawling around. Um, I don't want to spend all of our time staring at this one rotifer. Although it is also pretty interesting. There was a cool amoeba. Oh, there's a diatom. The uh, channel is named uh, About Diatoms because these are the things I study. That is a navicula. Um, and a lot of times we're looking at them in the scanning electron microscope rather than the light microscope. Um, most people don't realize that diatoms can crawl around. They don't think of algae as being able to to move, um, but uh, diatoms have, these ones have a, uh, a raphe, which is a, uh, a little slit that runs through the valve and it allows them to kind of crawl around in the um, surface, so it's crawling around on the glass slide right now. And um, to really see the detail of a diatom, we need to put the magnification up to a thousand X, which I would do except for it's a water sample and um, I need an oil objective in order to do that. So uh, the water slide and the oil objective do not go well together, which is why we have mounted uh, materials when we're looking at diatoms typically. And um, I can put some mounted material on from the slide um, if people are interested in seeing diatoms, but it's better if we just looked at them in the scanning electron microscope. So you could wait until next Monday or Wednesday and I'll stream them from the scanning electron microscope they won't be alive, but uh, but you will be able to see all of the detail very clearly. Let's see what else we can find in here. We found a really cool. There's another diatom right there. They're not all boat shaped. Hey, Kelthon. Yeah, it's got a lot of algae. Um, and it's got some creepy amoeba. And one of the other samples I had was filled with these sort of Coke bottle uh, looking testate amoeba skeletons. And I'm sure they're still alive because uh, the amoeba have all kinds of food in here. And um, This was a sample from some of the duckweed I skimmed with a, uh, I think I actually used a um, salad spoon to scoop some of the duckweed into this sample. The movement that you see is actually related to um, the cover slip is attached to my microscope objective that's really close to it. I found another amoeba for us. Oh, it might be the same one as before, but I don't think so. Because um, it's pretty far from where we were before. But that's another little amoeba. You can see a pseudopod stretching out. As it's sort of crawling around. Not quite as cool as the other one that we saw, which was over here somewhere. There's a little um, 
Paleozoan, I think. Like a little sun. You see it's got, uh, I think those are pseudopods as well. Sticking out in every direction. There's something over here spazzing out. <laughs> Ciliated thing, flagellated thing, spazzing out. The jittery thing is a, um, it's got a flagella. Here you can see it's, uh, it's a flagellated, it's probably like a cryptomonas. Um, cryptomonads are uh, little flagellated organisms that live in lakes and ponds. That's probably what it is, is cryptomona. Yeah, it's, it's partying pretty hard. I don't know. That's how it gets around. Uh, it sort of wiggles its tongue and drags itself around by it. Let's see. Oh. Not sure what that is. So many little things in here, these really tiny things that we would normally just kind of zoom past. And, uh, oh, that's a cool one. What's going on there? Sit still, little guy. Uh, we're just zoomed in, so I figured we might as well stay zoomed in. There's another amoeba for us. There's a lot of amoebas. Um, they're doing well in this pond. That one's got uh, long, stretched out pseudopods ready to grab something. Again, it's decided to have five legs or whatever. Gotta run, see you soon, okay. See you, Pac. Uh, if you haven't followed Pacific Plankton, I will make it easy for you by giving you a link directly to click a button and then uh, just click the little heart there on the uh, Pacific Plankton thing. You won't, uh, you won't regret it, I promise. She's one of the coolest things that you'll see on uh, her uh, microscope Nothing stuff is some of the coolest things that you'll Not see on you Twitch. Can imagine it. And um, I don't say that lightly. Um, she's a really incredible uh, collection of organisms much larger than these, most of them, um, but uh, from the ocean. Guess what? <laughs> we found another little guy. Oh man, has that one got a lot of little things sticking off of it. Amoeba, a different type. Look at all the little tiny pseudopods. <laughs> you said a keyword, you made a diatom up here. Do you see that, Zoikia? All you have to do is say amazing and a emote will appear on the screen. <laughs> you found one. How cool is that little guy? got a full belly of things it's eaten too. The amoebas are amazing though. There's just so many cool amoebas in these samples. Not just the testate ones, but the ones without the testates. How do they discern the different species of amoeba? I don't actually know, um, but they make different shapes. 
they're not, um, they're sort of like preferred shapes that they make. Like this one's kind of like hairy. Like see how it's kind of like hairy. Um, you probably, I could probably take a picture of this and we could find something that looks very similar to it because this is how it moves around. You see how it's kind of dragging itself by the little pseudopods? Um, and that's a different than the one that we were looking at earlier. It's a totally different shape and, uh, and body dimensions are different. So I'm not an amoeba expert, but I think that's, um, yeah, <laughs> he prefers Harold. <laughs> I bet he does. Uh, <laughs> but they, they have a bunch of different shapes and, um, and I think that, uh, um, that it's just has to do with the shape that they make when they clamber around some little ciliates. Sorry, we're like super close, so you can't see anything about what's going on. Here's the other one that we were looking at before. See, it's an amoeba, but that's a totally different kind of shape. Um, it's like a tree with trunks or something. It's got like a completely different like form. And I don't know, you know, exactly how they figure out what an amoeba is because they just seem like they can reshape themselves at will but um, I think it's based on their preferred shapes and then there's a bunch of amoeba that actually have skeletons um, I'm going to dig up a sample that might have uh, that might have some testate amoebas the question is um, where does the sample come from it's actually from my mom's pond this is uh, a pond in Ohio uh, where my mom lives, and it's in the forest uh, behind her house, and it's a spring-fed pond. Uh, it's just a natural little pond, and um, nobody ever uses it for anything. Uh, it generates mosquitoes, as far as I can tell, and that's about it. Um, the dragonflies like it, and apparently the amoebas like it a lot, uh, because here they are, <laughs> um, all over the place, and. Uh, um, the, uh, uh, I was home a week ago and I collected this sample. This one I collected with a salad spoon because my mom didn't have any late collecting equipment stuff. It looks like it's actually, um, attached to a lot of the debris in this sample, like whatever this thing is down here, this clump, and maybe it's digesting some of it. It also looks like it has a bunch of bacteria trapped inside of it, which is kind of cool. <laughs> Real life has good graphics. Um, it's not a Hydra. Um, uh, you know, there's another streamer that you should, if you're really interested in Hydra, there's two other streamers that you could check out. One of them is Jolkson. Oops, I need to type into the actual typey box. Um, Jolkson uh, sometimes has Hydra on his streams and um, Del Maximum. Um, both of those guys stream from their microscopes news, pretty regularly, everyone. and, uh, and they've found Hydra. I've never found a Hydra. Oh, Jolkson is how you found me, yeah. Um, uh, uh, he sometimes has Hydra on there, and, um, and Dell used to have, a, like, a jar with Hydra he would dig out all the time. Um, so they're both really good. Uh, Dell does a lot of gaming as well. Jolkson basically just has his microscope and then, um, you know, a lot of times he doesn't even talk or anything, but, uh, he does have a microphone. Uh, Dell's more of like a, a variety streamer. Jolkson basically just does his microscope stuff. So, um, in my channel, I do a little bit of light microscope work like we're doing now. And then, uh, I also stream from my scanning electron microscope. Here's another another amoeba. That one's got pseudopod coming out of all kinds of places. And um, sometimes I stream from my camera. I look at birds or the moon or storms. Um, I'll stream like a live 
pictures from storms as they pass through and take some lightning photographs while I'm at it. I'm a bit of a amateur photographer and I like to do a lot of bird streams as well. But right now there's some sort of a bird dilemma going on and um, they don't know exactly what's causing it. And so they told us not to feed birds. So guess what? Another weird little amoeba-like thing. This one just looks like a drop, but you can see that it's moving, right? Um, I don't know what kind of amoeba that is either. I have to ask, since I do ant keeping, have you ever had an ant under any of my scopes? Yes. Um, the scanning electron microscope, we've had ants. Um, if you want, um, we can do an ant stream on the scanning electron microscope and I can have you on to talk a little bit about uh, ants. Um, I'd be totally fine with that. I could have you on as a guest. Uh, I don't know much about ants other than, you know, basic things that any person who's got a little bit of a background. Um, but you could talk about the different parts of the ant. And um, if you had different kinds of ants that were dead that you wanted to send me, we could put different kinds of ants on there and you could sort of get different views of them. I'd be totally fine with that. I'd just have you in on the Discord. Um, and you could talk about, you know, whatever we're seeing in the scanning electron microscope. I also have a stereo microscope um, in my lab that we could stream from if you'd prefer to do it um, on living ants or uh, ants that aren't gold coated and stuck in a vacuum. <laughs> um, you know, I'd be happy to do that. Part of the problem is like a lot of the things that we can put in the scanning electron microscope, they're fun to look at, but um, I mean, other than just going like, yep, it's an ant, I don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, so it'd be better to have somebody who actually knows something about ants or whatever it is that we're looking at in the scanning electron microscope um, to talk about it. And I'd be totally happy with that. I'd, I'd enjoy that actually. So we're back at this uh, rotor for dude's house. There's the amoeba that was sticking onto the side of his house. It's still there. It's still making a little gooey home in his gooey home. And there's the uh, the rotifer he has not left, or rather she has not left because that is a deloid rotifer and the deloid rotifers are all female. So, hey, Pacific Plankton, I thought you were gone. We were gonna do a bunch of talking about you, uh, but now we can't. Now you're scared? Did I scare you? The, um, the Deloid Rotifers are all female. None of them are, um, are male, and they've been that way for 10 million years. So um, some of the species have been that way for 75 million years. They're um, unisexual organisms. They lay eggs, but their eggs are clones. And um, so they're all female, every one of them. The Bdelloid rotifers are the only ones that are like that. The other rotifers that we saw, the ones that look like a little spaceship or whatever, those are not uh, all female. They have a different life cycle, but these ones are only female. You can usually tell the Bdelloid ones, they look kind of like a slug with a, a tail and the, the corona sticking out and um, the grab on with stuff. Oh, you're lurking, okay. How intelligent are rotifers? I would say not very. Um, their brains are probably just tiny little ganglia and not much else. So, but I mean, they can make decisions about it's time to move or I'm scared or um, there's a light here or there's food here. So, you know, it's a multicellular organism like anything else, it follows its instincts more than anything else. It doesn't actually like, you know, think things through, but, um, but they can make, you know, response decisions about the environment that they're in. They can detect what's going on around them. Like it can tell when this, the table's vibrating too much, when I touch the camera or the microscope um, a little too aggressively, uh, it can sense that. 
and light and nutrients. Um, so it's a little antenna, which is now on the bottom side, as we can see the both propellers at the same time, they're both Corona. Um, it's a little antenna is sort of how it senses things. And then right here, these, these two little red dots, um, those are, as I mentioned, those are eye spots, which give it some idea about light uh, intensity for the most part. They're not really like good seers or anything, but they can detect light pretty well. Sensory reacting, yeah. Stereo microscope has too much bass? Well, it may. Um, my stereo microscope is actually a really nice one. It's the one that Spider ID uses. It's a, um, a Leica. I'm a Leica kind of a microscope person. So all of my microscopes in my lab are like as except I do also have some Zeiss ones that are the student grade ones. Um, but all of my microscopes in my lab are like this fancy one right here. This is like a $20,000 microscope. And then um, the ones in the lab are like $30,000 because they got camera software and stuff on them. Um, and then the little Zeisses are like a thousand a piece or something like that. We have a couple of those. And then the stereo microscope, is a, um, I think it was like $10,000. It's a pretty nice microscope, um, but uh, it's good if you want to look at bugs because they're sort of macro scale uh, imagery. It's pretty nice, but we can also put them in the scanning electron microscope. So we can chat about that sometime if you want, Soike. Uh, we can make some sort of a plan. If you want, you can pop into the Discord and uh, uh, we can make some plans around that. The um, rotifer doesn't like it when my mechanical keyboard starts going either. <laughs> um, okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna leave this here while I prep one more sample and you can watch the rotifer while I'm looking for some materials. Um, and then maybe we'll, we'll see one more bit of stuff and then we've got about a half hour left before Pacific Plankton stream starts and then uh, I'm gonna take over my my main job in life is a uh, uh, I mean the one that they pay me for I'm a professor but uh, most of my work is actually taking care of Pacific Plankton's um, channel when she's streaming as her mod. That's, that's mostly what I do. And then on the side, I do a bunch of research science and taxonomy and paleoecology and, you know, dribble that's not worth nearly as much as being a mod in her channel is. This sample was collected from the, the mud and uh, right adjacent to the, uh, the edge of the pond. And then I might actually make a second one just in case that one don't have anything in it. It's just a pure, like there was one that was just like right up against the edge of the pond that I collected. Um, It's this one. And we'll see what's in either of those. Then uh, I'm gonna send this link to my mom so she can see what's living in her pond and her neighbor can see what's living in her pond. Oops, somehow I got two cover slips. That's not gonna work. Better? All right, Rotifer. Take a break. 
I'm going to put that stuff back into the vial, and then I think I'm going to try to release it into my koi pond. It'll be a bit of a shock for some of those organisms, but um, it'll be better than getting dumped into the toilet, So, which is the only other option I have for them. I don't think they'll like that option. Super bright. Sorry about that. Some giant diatoms in here. These are pinularias. Here's some of the testate amoebas. Um, you can see they're monstrous. That uh, scale bar is way off. We're actually on 10x with no multiplier. That's this one. So that's uh, almost uh, a third of a millimeter sized testate amoeba. I saw a bunch of them in here actually kind of crawling around still too on Monday. I don't know if they're still alive, but I assume they are. There's a diatom that's still alive. A big one. Right there, this sort of golden brown color. These are what diet... You can see it's crawling now, uh, but you can see those are diatoms. Um, these are really big diatoms. Those are probably Pinularia. That's the genus. I thought I'd just sort of zoom through this and see if there's any of those big tested amoebas lurking around in the sample. I see skeletons from them, but I would like to see the actual organisms. They were present in the mud. That's pollen. There's a nematode worm right there doing its little dance. It's another tested amoeba skeleton right there. You can see they're really huge. I also saw some giant um, gastrotrix in this sample when we were looking at it. Um, we looked very briefly through it, I think, on Monday night. But there's a giant testate amoeba skeleton. That one's got horns. You see this thing right here with the horns? That's a testate amoeba skeleton. It's got three little horns on the top of it. It's not very clear from that photo, but I can zoom in. There, you can see those little horns. And then there actually looks like maybe there's another one, but there's at least three little horns. And then the stuff that you see is agglutinated or glued together material from the amoeba. Sorry, I'm going to move out so I can see if I can find any of these. See if any of them are still crawling around in here. There's another giant amoeba skeleton. Still some diatoms alive, so I feel like there should be some other things in here that eat diatoms that are still alive. There's another giant testate amoeba skeleton. They're really huge, and there's a bunch of them all over the place in here. There's another one. Some of them are kind of shaped like light bulbs, and some of them are like globes with spines on them. This is mostly a mud sample, so it's very likely that we just got a bit of the mud that doesn't have any living organisms still in it. But the tested amoebas can sometimes manage in the mud. You see there's some ciliates in there crawling around. See those things? Yes, the dance of the nematode. It's a uh, ritualistic dance. That looked like the skeleton of an enormous... There's a, uh, an enormous... Um, Tested amoeba skeleton back there. There's a giant diatom. It's mostly dead. I'm not sure what this little round thing is. It looks like maybe it's the skeleton of something. 
could be a dead amoeba. Do the dead amoebas still get eaten? Yeah. When you say it's a skeleton, so it's passed away, yeah. It could be passed away, or it could be that they, um, they got big enough that they had to change, you know, they had to divide, and then when they divide, the skeleton might be too big for them. So it's hard to say whether they're actually, like, died, or whether it just decided, like a hermit crab, you know, like, hermit crabs get too big for their shell, and then they've got to move on. But in this case, the amoeba, when it replicates, it does it by binary fission. So it will be half as big, and the skeleton might be too big for it uh, if they get really big before they divide. Um, I imagine that that's possible, that it, that it gets too big for the, to carry around the mass, and that it might need to make a new one. I mean, there's enough material around that can always make a new skeleton because they just make it out of junk. You know, like if there's diatom skeletons in the sediment, they make it out of diatom skeletons. If there's, um, you know, any kind of uh, detrital material, they'll make them out of those. So you can see right there, that's a tested amoeba skeleton, but I don't see the amoeba in there, but you can see right into the home. Uh, you can see it's made out of silt grains, basically. So, and then they just glue it together. Um, let's see if we can find any moving around in the other sample. And then if not, maybe we'll come back to that one. This one, well, it's got some things crawling around already. So, there's a giant diatom, that's a pinularia. We can actually almost see that well enough. If I zoom in, you can start to see some of the diatom structure on Pinularia. It's broken, so you know that's a dead diatom. But um, you can start to see some of the really intricate structure that they have. See, it's got these little tiny striae or stripes that run across the valve. And um, Pinularia have a raphe that runs down the valve. This is how they crawl around when they're living. Uh, it's a little opening that runs down the middle, and then they kind of move around like, uh, I want to say a little bit like a slug or a snail. Uh, they kind of drag themselves around using that slot uh, to, to drag themselves. And then the um, characteristics of the genera are driven by the ultra structure of the skeleton, so I could tell you it's pinularia because I just I know what pinularia look like at low magnification. But um, normally I'd have to put it at hundred x to tell you what species uh, of pinularia it is. And you can see these samples actually have a bunch of these amoeba skeletons with the horns on them. So there's a one of the horns. These are testate amoeba. Uh, the test in the testate amoeba, the skeleton or the valve, and there's a whole bunch of them. There's one right here. That's another test data me, but see how it's made of a bunch of little tiny grains that they've glued together? And that's another diatom for you right there. That's a star anise. We saw one of these on the SEM, uh, I think last week or this week. I think maybe it was on Monday we saw a star anise. So it has this structure in the middle called staros, and then it has really fine striae. They're just too small for the uh, the objective we have. I think I can, let's see what it looks like at 40. Yeah, we could actually get into 40 and take a look at this thing really closely so you can see those stri. Um, I need to make this adjustment. And then we should be able to zoom in on it pretty, pretty close so we can see some of the detail. There you can start to see the striae. So there's a lot of structure here, it's just very small. And that's why I usually look at these things in a thousand X or at the SE, in the SEM. But this is the central part, the staros, that makes us recognize that it's a staro nice, which is the genus. And then this is a raphe that it uses to crawl around, or it did when it was alive. And 
It's probably a shriveled up bit of the core of chloroplast right there. Um, but these are the stria. You can see these sort of radiating lines. They're very faint because they're made out of single rows of little tiny dots. But you can see those little dots pretty easily in the scanning electron microscope. So if you're interested in diatoms, you can always come check out um, my SEM streams. I feel like that's a better way to look at diatoms than, um, than the light microscope will ever give you. But um, still good to look at them in the light microscope occasionally. There's a worm, I believe. Oh no, it's a... That's a... Uh, another rotifer. Thought it was a worm, but it's definitely a rotifer. It's got a uh, fork tail. So... They're in the wrong filter, but there's the rotifer. There you can see, whoa, it took off. It started spinning its little corona and then it took off and it ran into a piece of junk, so it stopped. But it, it's got its head out right now and then it'll pull its mouth in and put its corona out like the other ones we were watching does. This one's decided it doesn't need to live and hide in fear, so it can just hang out. I'll fix the light a little bit. There you go, you can see the whole body and it's got a little forked tail that it uses with toes that it used to hang on. That is another type of testate amoeba right there. That's Arcella. This donut shaped thing, this brown donut is another type of testate amoeba. That's just the skeleton. We see these on here on my light microscope streams all the time. They, um, you'll see them with basically then pseudopods sticking out. So. I love stuff like this. I got interested when I was doing some world building for a speculative evolution project I'm working on. Oh, that's cool. That sounds really neat. Um, <laughs> I'm rad. Well, thank you, Likey-licious. Um, I do my best to be rad all the time. Doesn't always work out, but um, it's going pretty good tonight, so. Here's another one of these Arcellas, the little donut shaped thing. And then, then you can see there's a, a different type of testate amoeba right there, the skeleton again. I don't think that one's inhabited. And there's a whole bunch of these little ciliates that are zooming around. The ciliates, a lot of them are eating detritus or they uh, eat dead stuff. That's actually a really cool Arcella right there. You can see it's got scalloped edges a little star. That is a testate amoeba skeleton as well. It's another type of arcella. The donut's making you hungry. Uh, this is like a cruller, right? A cruller? Cruller? With the little spiky edges on the donut. That's a really cool skeleton. I wish we could see the uh, living organisms. There's another one. You can see these testate amoebas are all over these samples. Here's another one. There's another one. There's another testate amoeba skeleton. There's a planaria worm. Oh, there's two of them, a team. There's some planaria. That's an actual worm there. That's not a rotifer. Um, let's see if I take that up to 200. Yeah, you can see the little cilia that run around the outside of their body now. See that like blur around the outside edge of their body? Those are little tiny hairs that they use to move around. And that's a pretty gorgeous view of that guy. It's looking pretty dapper right now. Let's see if I do this, if you can see the little hairs any better. They're just like a little blur because they move. That's how they crawl around. There's some. Oh, you saw it real quick for a second there. Um, and I don't know if they mate uh, like a partner, but I often see them in pairs. And I've seen them try to eat stuff before. 
like I saw one try to shove a giant piece of algae in its mouth once and it wouldn't fit. So it's like trying to swallow it. This guy is a common... Oh, oh, there's another little guy that I don't know. I don't know what that is. Little ice cream cone? You see a little ice cream cone? Oh, he's, he's fast. I can't keep up with it. Okay, uh, let's see, maybe it'll just hang out. Oops, wrong button. Nope. I pushed the wrong button and that was the end of the ice cream cone. I dropped my ice cream cone. I don't know where it went. It's like a tiny little ice cream cone, silly it. I probably could get a good picture of that one and then I could figure out what it was. Uh, I've never seen those before, so a lot of times there's some things that I I will have seen before and then I'll spend a little bit of time off camera trying to figure out what they are. Here's another cool Arcella. There's another kind of donut. This one looks totally different than the other two. So one of them was star-shaped, one of them was kind of plain. This one is reticulated. See that? Got a hole in the center though. That's where the amoeba would have lived. It's like a little pollen grain almost. Donuts and ice cream. That's what we're that's what we're all about. It's dinner time here. My wife made brownies for me. Oh, well, not just for me, but for everybody, but the part where I get to eat it is for me. Um, and I had one of those right before the stream starts, so I can talk about desserts in front of you guys and not feel hungry. Um, because I know that there's another brownie always waiting for me when I get done with the stream. Oh, there's a little group of them. They're all friends with each other. They're probably eating something together, you know? The ciliates that eat together, uh, stay together. Look at them. And that is a hairy boy. And this one, that one's not round like the other guys. It's like, it's like, what are you doing here? We're having a round boy party. Get out. They probably found something delicious. It looks like a dead tested amoeba, potentially that they're consuming. Good news, everyone! Um, this uh, big green thing that you see right here, that's a testated amoeba skeleton again. And it looks like maybe it was eating or trying to eat a copepod. See how they're attached? That's a copepod skeleton. That big thing Nothing is a testate is amoeba. Not if you can imagine. And these things look like they're eating the testate amoeba from the inside. It looks like they found something to eat in there. It could be the testate amoeba is still alive, but it looks like there's a hole in its test or its skeleton, and these things are having a snack of it. That's what it looks like. Cause they're all gathered around. <laughs> yeah, they're just they're they're trying to eat whatever they can get um, out of that mess. It's pretty cool. They're all fighting over a delicious amoeba snack. Here's one of those guys out on its own. There's a diatom that's mostly mostly gone. Oh my goodness. That is a gastro trick, and look how full of green stuff it is. That is not an organism that photosynthesizes. It is just full of food. Holy cow. That is a huge gastro trick, and it is green from eating whatever it found. Uh, yeah, we're at 20x, so the scale is not correct. That's a worm sticking its face in there. We're actually on that scale. 
just to give you some idea, it's maybe a third of a millimeter or half of a, a third of a millimeter or a quarter of a millimeter. But that thing is usually clear and you can see it's got a little forked tail. That's the gastrotrich uh, story. I usually find them like that. Uh, it's crazy. And that little thing that's wiggly thing is a bacteria. Oh no, the battery died on my camera. You know what that means? It means I gotta put another battery in. No problem. Back to normal. Everything's eating everything. That's what they do. That's uh, that's how this system works. That's how everybody gets food. Except for the uh, autotrophs, they just eat sunlight. And good uh, news, everyone. Everyone. Oh, there's a testy to me, but that's actually alive. Thank you for the follow, disaster doe. There's a little testy to me, but and that one's living. So you can see it's pulling the skeleton, the uh, the test or the little bulb shaped thing around behind it, but it's just a little tiny one. And there's the pseudopods sticking out. And it looks like it's being harassed by a bunch of bacteria, but. Um, I don't know, maybe they're eating this cloud of stuff that's in here. And that's the testate amoeba's pseudopod it's using to pull itself around by. The shells, there's the little ice cream cone guy. He just stuck himself right in my image. Yep, he's zooming around in here. He's got like a little hood. But there he goes, he's come right into the image for us. Hello, you can stay there. Nope, nope, he's too fast. I thought he was just going to get stuck on that thing and stay around. Okay, well, I'm glad we saw at least one testate amoeba that's out rolling around. Um, before things went uh, completely dark. There's so many skeletons of them in here. Um, it's just incredible amount of them. I don't know what if they will make it through. I didn't look through the sample for uh, in the SEM for testate amoebas. I was really just trying to see what was. There's another giant rotifer. I was just trying to see what was um, in the diatoms really quickly today when I looked at my mom's sample. Um, but uh, we'll probably explore that one on uh, on Monday or Wednesday of next week so um we'll actually get a chance to take a look at some of those and uh it is midnight so i'm about to turn into a pumpkin uh, and by pumpkin i mean a moderator for pacific plankton who should be coming on any moment now if she's not already oh she is so this would be a great time for us to raid her so um I want to say thank you to everybody for hanging out. This has been a nice, uh, calm, interesting stream with lots of cool stuff to look at from my mom's pond and her neighbor's pond. And uh, we'll go back to this little rotifert for our... Uh, oh, a cheer. Thank you for the cheer. Uh, Will Okla. Will Okla, thank you for that. Um, I should point out that um, any money from subscriptions or cheers or donations um, I use to pay for um, or help pay for student research in my lab. So um, I'm a scientist, I get paid to do science and I get paid to do outreach. Uh, so I feel like this is just part of my job and I enjoy doing it. And um, so anything that comes in, I just give all of it to my students in the form of research money 
or I buy equipment for them or pay for them to go do presentations somewhere or something like that. So all of that is, um, is donated to them or to the SEM uh, maintenance or, or buying supplies for the stream. So I don't, I don't take home any of the money and I never have. So um, I wanna say thank you everybody for hanging out. Uh, we had a really cool stream with a bunch of cool stuff. And I'm gonna read through the list of people who followed because I like to do that here at the end. And we will give a raid to Pacific Plankton. Uh, Pacific Plankton. So if you're interested in watching little things like rotifers and copepods and worms, don't leave. Uh, stick around and then give Pacific Plankton a follow when we get her on the screen here in a minute. Um, we had a cheer, 500 bits from Will Okla. Thank you for the bits. Disaster Doe with a follow. AKDK7 with a follow. Board Architect with a follow. Cant Corm with a follow. Slight Quills with a follow. Gratakos, Gratakos with a follow. Thank you. Um, Durin's Alemica one. B Swift Mango. Uh, Zoikia gave us a cheer. Uh, Dantas Coincidence Control. Crystal Helm. Spooky Kit Kat. And we were raided by Billy Galaxy earlier. Um, Yura Yura. Dale Nap V. Uh, that's the list of people who followed me during the stream. It's a pretty good list. And um, as I said, stick around. Um, Pacific Plankton's going to stream. She does basically the same stuff, but we'll be looking at um, plankton from San Francisco Bay that she collected today. Uh, she went out. She goes out every day when she does a stream. So every Tuesday and Thursday when she streams, which is midnights, and um, she's on the West Coast. So for her, it's three hours earlier. Um, for me, it just turned midnight. And um, we'll see you there. So stick around and give her a follow. And, uh, and thanks for hanging out with me. So we'll see everybody. Have a good night.